Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to Hate to Break It To You. I'm Jamie Kennedy. And today I'm just gonna speak from the heart. I've been wanting to do this for a while and I just been too busy. I wanna talk today about um about an absolute legend that we lost and that is Ryan O'Neill. What do I wanna say? Well, I don't really talk about personal things on my pod. Like I'm not that type of person. I like to keep my separate life, my personal life personal. We live in a world where people make their personal life their business and that's not how I was raised. And that's caused some issues in my personal life because I don't put it out there. Um, I think my business is my business, my art is my business, and my personal life is my personal life. You don't need to know about it. Um, but you know, society has changed that. You know, so like when my own parents died, I think I talked about it a little bit on a pod. I want to do a, a death pod, you know, about each of my parents, but I have to really think it out. Um, but it's not my thing. Like when people, when my parent, when people in my family die and stuff, it's it's my personal business. You know, I don't like to put it out there because it's my it's my per, it's not, I don't want people to know my business. Like it's my own process, you know. So I don't I don't I don't know why people do that. I guess. I guess if you're in if you're in a small group and it's really your friends on Facebook and all that stuff, then yes, you can do that. You should do that, I guess. But if it's someone like me who's known as, you know, I'm a public figure, I don't wanna I guess you wanna honor them, but I honor them my their whole life. I can I don't know. I don't know. It's I'm I'm conflicted, but you can get what I'm saying. A few weeks ago we lost Ryan O'Neill. To me, he is one of our last, last true, true movie stars, real stars. In any genre. And I wanted to talk about it because it affected me and how he blessed me. Obviously, I had known who he is for over 30 years before I got to work with him. And, you know, Love Story, I believe, is what put him on the map. Paper Moon with his daughter Tatum. And then he did Buried London. I mean, he's worked with amazing directors. He's made amazing movies. I think he, the movie he did with Barbara Streisand. I don't know if it's What's Up, Putsy Cat. Or, anyway, he was a true, true Hollywood star and a legend. Just what I think stardom is. You know what I mean? He's just, first of all, he's just a beautiful man. He was just a beautiful man great looking guy from california i almost want to say he's from malibu he lived in malibu jewish sensitive as hell truly funny like an amazing conversationalist paid attention highly emotional a wild card and tough as nails it he he, he for him for people to mess with him like i would never ever ever to see him mad and i never did because he he seems like he laughed a lot of things off now i know there's a lot of other stuff I'm, i'll talk about later i'm not gonna get really into it but for him to get mad i could see him being the type of personality who was like now come on baby let's not do that let's not do that. i mean like but he was just a great looking guy highly athletic an amazing boxer i think he was no he wasn't in a champ he was in another boxing movie i think and his, but the, why am I saying this? Because he had a huge hands. Like I have huge hands, and his hands dwarfed my hands. And he had a big, thick nose and a thick head and a thick head of hair. I mean, to to get if you got, I'm not a fighter, but I'm psycho. But to get a mitt on him, if you did, I doubt you would ever make a dent. I think it would be impossible to hurt him. He was so tough. But he, he's the type of guy that you box him that he'd be giggling and shit. Like, <laughs> come on. And then if you did tag him, he'd probably fucking, if you awaken that that beast, forget it. So why am I saying this? He was a raconteur. You know, the guy that would have a scarf in the wind, you know, driving a Porsche, you know, doing that, probably doing that drug. You know, being a fucking, you know, a cad, you know, a ladies man. I couldn't imagine being a star in the 70s with him. Like, there, you, he walks in a room, forget it. It's a rap. There's not one fucking female that's going to not fucking want to hang with him that night. Like, he was, he's that. He was everything. Deeply dramatic actor. Never took himself so seriously, though, and that's what made him even better. Not a poser. That's what I want to say. The opposite of anything that was false and pretentious. He was a beautifully open soul and it affected me when he died he was 80 he had a long life i hadn't kept up with him in a while i'm sad i didn't have him on the pod i apologize ryan to you for not having you on i apologize to your family i should you know we never talked about it i haven't talked to you in a while but i just it would have been beautiful 
When we were doing Malibu, I know he was fighting with cancer. He had some sort of cancer, thyroid or blood or something, and he, he swore on this drug he was taking, and it, he was so sick before we started, and then he agreed to do the movie because he was doing better, and then it went in remission, and he was as strong as an ox. I mean, he was probably 60. And, you know, I just want to talk about my experience with him and, and, and give him his flowers, which I should have did when he's alive. You know, this is a good lesson for me. Give people the, the flowers when they're alive. I I think I do this now, and I think that AI is going to bring people back in a way. I know that sounds crazy, but that's why I don't feel terrible about it. Like even my mother, I had some issues with her death, but I think I'll be able to talk to her again. I know that sounds crazy, but we're entering a crazy time, and hopefully I will be able to talk to Ryan. And, you know, I just want to say this. It's like we, we had an, a, a Malibu's Most Wanted is, is lightning in a bottle. You know, it's um, it's a movie that shouldn't have been made wasn't going to get made, couldn't have gotten made, and it just kept failing upward. We had so many roadblocks, but somehow we got through them because people would just laugh. You know, I had, I'll, I could tell you the whole process of the movie sometime. It was a long ass process, but to get the movie made, there'd be, there'd be an hour pod to tell you how it happened. But one of the things though, is that we got an amazing casting director, like, you know, might be the biggest casting director in town, like top five. Mary Vernu, who's been instrumental in me in my career, you know, um, from casting me in Three Kings to another movie that's a sneak, sneaky hit called Saul Good to Malibu. I think she put me in Looney Tunes, too. My part got cut out. Like, at least four movies. Plus, I just she was the woman who believed in. She believed in all of us young actors. She was this young, just cute casting actor, so sweet to us. Um, she blew up. I wish that she, you know, I kept in touch with her more. But I know if I do good in something, she'll see me and think about it. You just have to be on her radar. But she was always so sweet to me and to all of us, to Seth Green and the Jason Lees and the Nikki Katz and the, just all Adam Goldberg, just the, my whole generation of actors. She she loved us and she brought us in. And, you know, she's looking look her up. So we got her to cast. And she agreed to it, which was huge. And when you make a movie, having great people being great at their job, what makes a movie great? And, you know, sometimes a lot of times casting directors get on my nerves. But a good one, it's an art. And she's an artist. And the first person that was cast was her idea was Tay Diggs. I never even thought of him. And I thought there's no way he'll do it. And that was, and she got us a meeting like that. She said, make him a real offer and he'll be sitting with you in this office. And that was just outside of the box incredible. And then the director said, I want Anthony Anderson. He worked with him before on C-Spot Run. And I said, "That's a, yeah, that's a no-brainer. And he said, you know, make him an offer and he'll come in. And he did. And then we, st I didn't really think. I was like me and Nick. You know what I mean? Like that was it. Like I didn't have all of the other people thought out. I had, I had archetypes in my mind. And she goes, who's going to play your father? And I don't know. I probably have notes somewhere. Oh, we're saying, we're saying, blah, 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 blah. And she's like, well, well, why don't you get the king of Malibu, the guy who actually lives in Malibu? And I'm like, who? And she's like, Ryan O'Neal. And I'm like, what? Ryan O'Neal? Like these Oscar winner, been in multiple Oscar, worked with Kubrick. He ain't doing nothing. And I'm like, what? She's like, yeah, he's sitting in Malibu at the beach. I mean, he works, but... This would be a total departure for him. And it's funny. I think if you make him the right offer, I think there's a move there. And I was like, and I'm like, can you get us a meeting? And she's like, yeah. She's like, why don't you have a table read and I'll invite him. I think we, I, I think, I know, I think we just made an offer. And I think we went, and then I think he had to come to the table read. I'm not sure. Don't fact check me on this. Before he finalized his thoughts. And I was like, are you kidding me? Like, that's just an honor to, to have him speak bit in the direction of this like little comedy and she's like no i think that he would think it's interesting he's much funnier i think than, than people realize and you can introduce him to a whole new generation of people and he he's getting hot again and he had just done a movie with al pacino which also got a lot of love so he was getting hot and it was a very dramatic movie i was like like i was just honored a because he's just beyond the legend b i'm at the height of my career and i'm like but he can, like, I was getting to meet people because I was in the position of power. And they were like, pay attention to this guy. He's crazy. But people, the powers of be like him. So listen to him. So I, I knew that power that I had. And I was like, okay, like, I got to honor this power. And to get to meet, like, just getting to meet him was m going out with a couple chicks from Maxim was a great, ex it was a great 
perk of my power, but meeting Ryan O'Neal was way bigger than, you know, number 27 and number 36 for Maxim. You know, and hometown hotties, 100, you know. So it's like, and they're great. I'm sorry, girls, but Ryan O'Neal, you know. So so it was like, we do it. We do the read-through. He's hilarious. You know, everyone's hilarious. I have to say, I'm hilarious. People are laughing. We're dying. Everyone's dying. And he's like, we got to do it. You know, and like he just said yes right there. And, um, you know, we had to make a deal, and we did. And um, it was an honor A because of who he is. B, because he literally is in Malibu. And he's like the king of it. And C, because he's such a good looking guy. <laughs> and and then when Bo was my mom, who was like at one, you know, a movie Perfect Ten is named after her. Like, I'm like, these are my parents. And that's all Mary. I mean, that's her brilliance was like, yes, these are your parents. And I do think of Ryan as the governor of California. He was born here, raised here. Loved it. I, he is Cal. He is Bill Gluckman. Is California? I mean, he was. I mean, he's acting, but he's not. I mean, he, he's in the soil of the state. You know, it's he's the dream driving in a you know a, a convertible like his '60s retro scarf. You know, Al Sean Connery is James Bond. Ryan O'Neill is. PCH, you know what I mean? Hello, darkness, my own. Like that driving him there, forget it. Like it's crazy too, because Dusty is people think of a New Yorker neurotic Jew, but Dusty's also a king of California. People don't realize that he's a Pasadena kid. Dusty, I call him Dusty. I don't care, Dustin Hoffman. So you think of this stuff, and I just I'm big because California there's a lot of problems right now, and I heard some new shit, but the essence of California is my life. I love it. Um, all these influences. I see some shit. These douchebags talking shit about L.A. It's not that no, nothing's wrong with L.A. There is problems with the government right now and stuff. And we're having problems. But the problems are you. Like if you're an influencer and you have no talent and you just have a bad attitude, get out. Like th those are the people that ruin it. So when people talk shit about L.A., they're not talking about the natives or the people that have businesses here or staples of the community. They're talking about you. So if you are that influencer and you're that type of you, Get out, get out, and lock them out because you don't respect it. So that's not L.A. L.A. are the people in Topanga. L.A. are the people in Ventura. L.A. are the people in Tarzana. L.A. are the people in DTLA. L.A. are the people, the delis in Hollywood, the, you know, the gay bars in West Hollywood, the studios in Culver City, uh, the people that make up, you know, all of that. That's L.A., not you. And I get mad at it because Ryan, to me, spoke of California. A chill, anyway. It's a lot. A chill, beautiful guy who was living the dream. And I just, it's, it's, it's to get to work with him. It was just like, it was a dream. Like, I didn't know enough of his work. I knew what a legend he was. Um, th Like, when I think of this, like, Romeo and Juliet is the staple of my career. I don't care if I have just, you know, one seminal scene in it, which is the gas station, but I'm peppered throughout the movie. But it's just a staple that will forever be an amazing piece of art. And then follow that up with Scream. Which was just, you know, Scream is a phenomenon. You know, Romeo and Juliet is an, a hugely also phenomenon. Like, it's getting hotter than ever. Um, Three Kings is an amazing movie. It doesn't have the loudness in pop culture that it should, but it's just an amazing movie. So these different movies that I've done. But I would say in my whole career, with all the different things I've done, I could argue that Malibu is louder for me than Scream. I mean, Scream is right there. But I almost want to say Malibu hit at the peak of my power. People to this day, they still quote Randy. They pink hair like Romeo and Juliet. They're paranoid as NSA from I mean, in the state. They love jokes from JKX, but B-Rad speaks to them. B-Rad actually walked so Jack Harlow could trot. You know what I mean? Like, And one of the reasons the movie was so good is Besides all the players, it was as as much as I love myself. Like you know, you know, you have the, you know, Nick, the director, and Anthony and Tay, and there's too many Terry, so many people in Cal. But Ryan is one of these reasons. It's like. T 20 people that have made this movie and he's one of them um that movie wouldn't be without it every part there was no small parts no small actors like every part like a terry cruz at the smallest part and how huge he is and we all believed in it and so for him to do that he blessed me and i just have a couple stories um is that you know he was fighting cancer and he he did the movie and 
he was in remission when we started. It was a big deal. I think he felt good that he was doing it. D he's really funny, as you know. Really funny. Super collaborative. Like, open to any idea. It's always the good ones that are, right? Like, he would welcome more. And he would defer to me. He would be like, well, you're the funny man. You know what this is. Like, do you like that? And But you didn't have to do anything. Right? You just turn the camera on, you know. Just, it's just a couple of things I'll say. And, and one of them was, is, is that when I was doing the movie, like I said, I was at the height of my powers. And Playboy always had the centerfold. And there was like Play Bunny of the Year or like Miss July. I think it was of the year. Beautiful girl, woman, 22 or 3, I think. 23, let's say. And in her questionnaire, they filled out all the different things, and she said, you know, ice cream, you know, she, I, I love ice cream, and, you know, riding horses, and, you know, um, going to baseball games with my dad or whatever. And then I went to TV shows, and it was like, blah, blah, favorite show. Jamie Kennedy Experiment. And she picked that as her, like, one of her top TV shows. And I saw it. And um, the studio was so sweet to me, and they saw that, and they framed it. People will take this the wrong way, probably, but because they're pussies. But let's just put it positively. The studio, I'm shooting, and it was like my second week. And at lunch, all of a sudden, they go, hey, someone wants to meet you. And I'm like, what, dude? Come on, I'm in here. I'm working on my raps and stuff. They go, no, I think you should meet this person. And a limo pulls up. And sure enough, out of the limo steps the playmate of the year and she came on set and she was so sweet she hung out for like half a day and was watching and just was like one of, you know they they said hey do you want to come down and it was like a gift to me to like you know they knew i was like this girl's so beautiful and, and it was a beautiful thing a beautiful gesture you know i was like it made me feel like a baller and ryan knew what was going on and he just turned to me and he says, it's the life, baby. Isn't it great? <laughs> he just knew that like my time was arriving. And it was like he understood it because this is a guy who's been living this life his whole, you know, his whole life. So he was like blessing me in to like, isn't it beautiful, baby? And I just one thing. He was like this mentor of like how you should conduct yourself as a star. And here's the other thing. This is this is what I remember most. Is that two other things. Is it? He was a man. I never had this on a set before, and I never had it since. Every time we would work together, this could sound crazy to you, but to me it was normal, and I thought he was a real fucking man. He would grab my head, and he would grab these big mitts, and he would come and go, Good morning, baby. And he would go, and kiss me right on the fucking lips. And I just got used to it. This big, beautiful man who I thought would do anything for me, and I was like, kiss on the lips is that gay no he was a fucking man he was a real man and it's only a real man that can kiss another man on his lips without questioning your sexuality i never thought anything weird it, i never thought anything sexual i just thought that was like i was like a, his celluloid son you know he had his, his real sons and i was his his son in film you know and he was like good morning baby isn't it a beautiful day and he kissed me right on my lips and I just remember how strong he was. And I just thought, that's fucking crazy. But then after like the third kiss, I got used to it. I wonder how that clip's going to be. But I was just like, that's a beautiful man. You know what I mean? I didn't kiss my father on the lips, but my father gave me a kiss on the cheek or the head and stuff. But he went right to the lips. It wasn't anything weird. It was a real man. He could also knock you out. But he was also beautiful and gentle. And it was nothing of it. I think that's how movies were in the 70s and 60s. And people were just... It was, we're making a lot. It's this beautiful life. It's a beautiful life, isn't it? Oh, I love you, man. How you doing? It was just beautiful. I would love to see how people react to that. And then another thing I remember, we're doing our raps and stuff, and this really just made me cry. Um, we're doing the musket stuff, and Nick wrote all this hilarious shit with the musket. He wrote musket. I'm like, this is so fucking brilliant. And um, I was rapping to it. I think Nick wrote some of the raps, and then I freestyled some raps or whatever. And then Ryan was like, goes from being confused to like, oh. And then they'd be like, and like his transition is so brilliant. Like it's a really good acting moment. You have to remember, I'm starring in the movie, co-wrote the movie. I came up with the character. It was my first lead. We were a million dollars over budget. We couldn't go over any more days. The director was stern with me, but kept me in line, which I fought with him. And then I respect him so much now for doing that. Cause he's like, you want a fucking movie? Then you're going to have to do this shit. Like I'm, he's like I'm trying to deliver you a movie, dude. He was. It's another convo, but he was. 
he taught me a lot about it's not just about fucking art, dude. You got to This is commerce. And I, I was doing, t I mean, I was basically say I was producing. And I was making every, tons of decisions with everybody. And I was, I was in, involved with every fucking decision. So it's like, you know, four or five hats. And I had to like, you know, I was making, writing my raps. And I would go at night with Damon Elliott. And we would rewrite raps. And like, oh, he'd be like, that's too good. Like, you got to make it less than that, you know. And, or that's not good enough. And it'll be funnier. So I was doing like six jobs. And I would sleep like four nights. I remember I had a hemorrhoid during the movie. And people ask me about it. like it was a stressful movie. Like people loved the movie, but it was, was made fuck. There's a lot of pressure, but I wouldn't stop. I just pounding coffees and green teas, and we were shooting the. I think we were shooting the musket at like two thirty in the morning, and everyone was like petering out. And Ryan looked at me and he's like, "You're like Al Pacino, baby." And I said, "What?" He just did a movie with Al Pacino. He's like, "Al never runs out. He never runs out. He just keeps going and going." He goes, "The only other energy level I've ever seen to match Al Pacino." He said that to me. He fucking and I had a buddy work with Al and also told me that Al in another way never stopped. His energy never stopped. I'll take that impression. I could do it if I really work on it. Long story boring is that made me cry. I was like, are you kidding me? He's like, yeah, you're like Al, baby. You just don't stop. You don't stop. It ain't done until you say it's done. And I just, I, I just was like, if this, if I knew we were doing anything else in my career, getting compared to Al Pacino from one of his co, his cohorts, his he was a movie star when Al Pacino was a movie star and also starred in a movie with Al Pacino and just work with him. For him to be, I'm never going to say I'm Al Pacino, but to to be energetically compared to him was one of the top moments of my life and my career. And um, and I, I just I just can't say enough that I just thought the man was a beautiful soul. He blessed me. I'm I'm wrap up with that. I'm just going to say this, and I know there's a lot of stuff that has happened in his personal life. There are some dark demons there. My heart goes out to anybody that had to deal with stuff, and you know I don't know his whole story i know there's a lot of dark demons there i i know that there's a lot of things that are going to push back because when i posted about it i had a ton of people pushing on me and i was just like just let me have my moment and um but i don't know everything i heard some stuff and i was told some stuff and <sighs> but i don't want to focus on that but maybe if i put this video out and people say stuff that they're gonna say it and then i'll be like okay i didn't know that because i don't know everything i know some tragical things that have happened i also know that Lee Majors told me that he asked him to watch his wife while I was shooting the movie Farrah Fawcett, and he ended up um, marrying Farrah Fawcett and taking her from Lee. So I know Lee wasn't really happy about that. I should have Lee on the pod. So I guess, you know, but I mean, Lee, you said Ryan watched the wife, and Lee's also a pimp. So, I mean, I was pimp on pimp game. I don't know. I know there's a lot. It's not for me to speak on because I don't know enough, but if I'm really dumb, then you can educate me. But just I'm just trying to give you my moment of what I felt about this man and how he blessed me. And we made something that to this day still is alive and well in our business. And I think it's because of him. He's a major part of that. And he had a long life. But, you know, definitely a lot of success and definitely a lot of torture. But I just, you know, want to honor him with this and just just say, you know, you blessed me, man. You're a, you're a real one. You're one of the last ones. And I owe you a lot. And I can't pay you back, but I can pay it forward. And I'm just lucky to work with him. And that's what our business is. When you're blessed by your peers or, or legends and they let you, they jump you in. And he's always been open to me. He's always said, hey, come out to the beach. Come out, we'll have some lunch. But I was so much in career mode. I was like, okay, okay. I was just before social media and I was just fucking. <laughs> and I'm sorry I lost touch. I guess I just want to say thank you, Ryan. My heart goes out to your family. To your, if Ryan's family sees this. My heart goes out to you. Hopefully you can find some peace. And, um, you know, to anyone watching who lost someone, you know, give them your flowers while they're alive. I think that is, and I have to do that more. And I apologize to the people that I owe flowers to. But life is to be lived, baby. Do what you love and the rest will follow. Thanks, guys. Like, subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye.